So he came to a certain place and, and he stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth and its top touched, reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, pause. Look at your neighbor and say, imagination. Can I, can I give you a picture that I'm begging you that as long as you live, you never let this go from your mind. Every night from here on out when you go to sleep, before you close your eyes, picture a ladder. Picture a ladder that reaches to heaven. And on that ladder, picture angels carrying your needs up to God and bringing his response back to you. And picture God standing at the top of the, the ladder, overseeing the whole operation, making sure they get to you exactly what you need. And he receives from you the second that you just get that. Just. I bet you sleep better. Bet you wouldn't toss and turn as much. Am I the only one who tries to fix problems in their sleep? I'd be going to bed. How do I figure this out? Wake up at two in the morning. How do I figure this out? Come on now. You, you, you ever ordered something, Amazon or whatever it may be? You got the little text message, a little email or whatever, package delivered. You go home, check on your front doorstep. See if someone stole it. Why? Because you were expecting. What if we woke up every morning? It's like, all right, God, where's the packages you delivered overnight? Because... When I went to sleep, I saw the requests going up and I saw the angels coming down and I saw you, you watching it. So it... behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you, in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I'm with you and I will keep you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I've spoken to you. Come on, prophesy to your neighbor. Tell him he's not going to leave you until he's finished what he said he's going to do. Come on, look at your other neighbor. Look at your other neighbor. Look at your other neighbor. Say, so sorry, you're second, but it's okay. Tell him, come on, tell him God ain't going to leave you either until he's finished doing what he said he's going to do. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep. Is this too much talking to your neighbor? Ask your neighbor, are you sleeping? Come on, ask your neighbor. Ask. If they were telling the truth, they'd say yes. My, my eyes are open, but my faith is closed. I brushed my teeth this morning, but I didn't really have any expectation for God. I, my body's awake, but my faith is asleep. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, neighbor, but you're going to wake up tonight. Come on, tell somebody. Tell them, you're going you gonna to wake up tonight. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord. in this place and I did not know it can I tell you what I felt as I read that 
Surely the Lord is in this marriage. Surely the Lord is in this hospital room. Surely the Lord is in this job that I hate. Surely the Lord is in this city that I'm trying to get out of. Surely the Lord is in this season that I'm trying to pray away. And I did not know it. And Jacob was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. I have a quick message for you today. Somebody say it's going to be quick. It's going to be quick. It's going to I got a quick message for you today at Columbia entitled, What I Don't Know Can't Hurt Me. What I Don't Know Can't Hurt Me. Father God, you're here. You're healing. You're moving. You're doing miracles that only you can. God, wake us up to who you are. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. What's that old ratchet song that? Oh, my 90s, babe. The one, how did you? We're not supposed to. Oh, the block is hot. I know. I tried that love thing for the last time. My heart said. Well, that took a turn real fast. That took a turn. Boy, these saints can. No, 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 no. Oh. Oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's exactly what Jacob was singing. As he was looking for a stone to go to sleep on. In what the Bible says was the middle of nowhere. You ever ended up in the middle of nowhere? Maybe not your physical location. We all are Christians, so we use ways. Because those two things are synonymous, if you didn't know. So maybe you never were in a physical position that you said, how'd I get here? You ever been in a season of life, though? Just, come on now, just tell, tell the truth, shave the devil. You're going on your fifth year of dating that person. Somebody say, he meddling, he meddling, he meddling. And you're just like, how did I get here? At all. Come on now. You just had your fourth kid. You can't remember the last time y'all had a date night. Uh, oh, that got real, didn't it? Oh, you, I'm, I'm going to offend everybody. Come on now. You writing that check? Mailing it out late on purpose. <laughs> Y'all always had money. Y'all never been like this before. <laughs> you ever know, post office be like, how long is this going to take to get us to this destination? They're like, oh, we could have it there overnight. No, 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 don't, no, nope. <laughs> nope. I need some little longer, a little longer, huh? How about two weeks? If you could just stamp, it was mailed today, but like stick it in your drawer and like. You ever been in a spot where you were just like, how did I get? I never would have seen myself here. If you had asked me three years ago where I would be today. Well, here. You ever said that about Maryland? I love this state, by the way. I love this state. I love this state. Not as much as I love Miami, but I love this state. It's a great state. It's a great state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I'll be honest with you. 
I don't, I don't dwell too much time there. Boy, that's a bottomless pit of just, if you would have asked me what my life would look like five years ago, 10 years ago, we all have an aspect that's not quite lining up with what we thought it would be. And if we have those moments, and we don't have too many moments, TikTok, make sure that happened, right? Before you go to bed, you got 29,000 videos you can watch just to never have that moment. I got 17 ignored text messages I could respond to. Just to, But when, if you, in the, the rare occasion that you just catch me undistracted, I have the thought, how? How did I? I get here you see Jacob had, had been through some stuff to get to where his ear was if you know the story of Jacob Jacob and Esau were twins they were born and before they came out of their mother God prophesied that the younger would rule over the older Esau was the oldest by a couple of seconds Jacob came right after grabbing his older twins heal. And from the second that Jacob was born, he, he lived his life trying to make the prophecy over his life come to pass. If God tells you that he's going to do something in your life, you've got to understand you can't do it in your own strength. Because if you could do it in your own strength, he wouldn't have told you because you wouldn't have needed him. Here's Jacob going through this life just stressed out of trying to create something that was his, but it wasn't his to produce. Finally, it got to the place where Jacob said, God's not moving fast enough. Life's not moving fast enough. I'm going to make it happen in my own strength. And he ended up cheating his brother out of two thirds of their father's enormous wealth. And, and here's just my thought. When Jacob was coming up with the plan with his mama of how to cheat his brother out of millions of dollars, I think the way that Jacob saw it ending was him loaded and his brother mad. But on this night, when he's saying, how did I get here? Jacob had nothing. A lot of people miss this. He lied to get two thirds, but he left the hundred percent to keep his life. Because sometimes when we take matters into our own hands, we don't just not get what God had for us, but we forfeit what was actually. And just for fun, he never got it back. Rest of scripture, Esau kept the hundred percent. Of what came from their father. And here is Jacob running for his life. And the only reason he stopped. Is because the sun had set. If he had more light. More energy. More friends. More money. More people to call on. He'd have kept going. But life has a way of just. Stopping you. In your tracks. And it was here. On the run. With nothing. At his greatest moment of disappointment. That he had the greatest encounter with God. Up to that time in his life. Could it be that our greatest God encounters come when we least expect it? Here's Jacob, a liar. A thief, broke with nothing, running for his life. And he says these words, surely the presence of the Lord was in this place, in the place that I don't want to even be in. And I had no idea. Church. My, not exaggeration, my greatest fear is missing God. Not missing heaven. My faith is, 
surrender my life to Jesus. I know that he's forgiven me of my sins. I know that my name is lit, written in the hand, Lamb's book of life, but I'm just scared of missing God right now. You, you ever been around a friend and they said, oh, that's so-and-so, some celebrity, somebody you care about or whatever, maybe you go, where, 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 I can't say up. That happens to me all the time because I'm usually up in the nosebleeds. <laughs> where they at? Every time I read this passage, it, it shakes me because I'm like, God, in this season of nowhere that I never would have expected myself in, am I, am I missing you? I'll give you three quick thoughts. First one is this, write this down. I, I can, I can miss God. I, I, I absolutely can miss God. One, 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 I have a lot of irritations in life, y'all. God's working on me. You know, one of the fruits of the Spirit is patient. But I, I've been eating all the other fruit, and I missed that one. And then by the time the patient fruit gets to me, it's like stale and spoiled and all that kind of stuff. So I'm still, I'm working on that patience thing. And, and he keeps on giving me opportunities for, for my patience. And, and one of those opportunities is, is when the package that I order never gets delivered. And I, I don't know why it happens over and over and over and over again. But I'll order a package and they'll say, hey, it's coming on Monday. between, And they give you like a really good range. You know what I mean? We want to be specific. We don't want you to sit around waiting all day for us to show up. So we're going to deliver it somewhere between 7 a.m. and 11 p.m. So that way you can know, just plan your day accordingly. I'm going to be... I remember I, I, I was home one day and I, I knew the package was coming and I, I, you know how you like pre-sign for it online so they could absolutely leave it and, and I'm sitting there the entire day and then at the end of the day, I get an email that says, package was undelivered, no one answered the door. And I'm like, I was here all. I wonder, could it be that there's seasons in my life where God is looking to deliver something to me. That he's so close that he's actually knocking on the, but I'm preoccupied. And I, you know what's even worse? It's to miss God when I actually need him to do something for me. And I'm wondering, what is it about Jacob that caused him to miss God? I, I think one of the things that caused Jacob to miss God was stress. Jacob was so overwhelmed that life was not going the way, watch this, that God had said it would go. Not even, it's not even something that he had come up on his own. God told him that you're going to rule over your family. But because it had not gone the way that he thought it was going to go, that stress clouded his vision from the fact that God was working all along. I think another thing that caused him to miss God was ambition. What, 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 uh, there, there's, there's semantics and you'll hear one pastor preach and he said, you need godly ambition. And another pastor will preach and said, ambition is of the devil. You don't need ambition, just walk in grace. And you hear the next guy say, you need, it just, everybody's confused. I'm going to say this. I think there's godly ambition and there's ungodly ambition. Ungodly ambition is when I'm going after whatever God never said I could have. Godly ambition is when God said I could have it and I'm going after it. And for some reason, I think that Jacob was so consumed in what he was going after instead of the one that sent him after it that he, that he missed God. I think relational drama can cause you to miss God. Come on. Jacob had the favor of his mother. It was kind of iffy with his father. Esau, not so much. And as you read this story, Jacob is playing this relational game of let me try to lie to this person and keep this person happy and do this and do that. And he completely missed the fact that God was in this situation the entire time. The Bible says this in Psalm 139, verse 7. Where can I go 
from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. The psalmist tells us there is nowhere that you can go that God is not there, but I'm not going to talk about you. I'm just going to talk about me. I, I've come to realize that I am not as aware of God's presence as I need to be. Because as I rehearse that situation, I begin to think, if I thought God was there, I wouldn't have said that. If I thought God was there, I wouldn't have done that. If I thought God was there, I wouldn't have even thought that I'd have been on my best behavior. I don't know what, what, what household you grew up in. I grew up in a household where they believed in whooping kids. <laughs> they kind of believe in whooping adults too. That's why we moved out. But <laughs> me and my four siblings will always talk. And yeah, yeah. If, if, if you grew up in a time out household, this is going to be completely irrelevant to you. We'll, we'll come back after this analogy. But anybody grew up where they, they still believe spare the rod, spoil the child. They, because I, anybody grew up in a household where they give you the dumb speech before they whooped you? This this going to hurt you a lot more than it hurts me. Well, give me that stick and let's see. I, I, you're, you're better than this. No, I'm not. That's exactly who I am. And me and my siblings, we, we, we would debate who got the worst whooping. And I'm not going to tell you who it is, but Patrick got this whooping one time. Well, long story short, my mom told him to turn off the Xbox. He didn't turn it off. He got mad, blah, 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 blah. And she, she didn't whoop him. She just said, turn it off. And he walks downstairs and he said, people these days. Get on my nerves. That's what we said. But what my brother did not realize is that my mother had followed him down the stairs. When you don't know whose presence you're in, you say things that you wouldn't normally. I think my mom was having fun that day. She said, who are these people? that you refer to. You know when you're like, it's over, but you're still trying to dig a dig. He's like, I mean, just people. She said, but there are no other people except for me and for you. And next thing you know, muscles just started popping out of her biceps and the rest of us ran for cover. If I knew that God was here, would I be so overwhelmed with worry? I mean, if you're not going to have faith, you don't want to do it in front of God. Come on now. And the only time I don't have faith is when I forget that I'm always in front of God. If I'm going to take matters into my own hand, which is a sign of not trusting that God's going to do it. I don't want to do it in front of God. Could, could you imagine if you're standing next to God and God said, I'll fix it. And you say, cool. And you start to fix it. He's going to ask you, what are you doing? Who me? I'm fixing it. But then I just say I was going to fix it. Yeah, but I thought, what, you thought I wasn't here? You thought I wasn't working on it? You thought I didn't see it? You thought I... He says, surely the presence of the Lord was in here. Where? In the nowhere that I wish I wasn't even in. And I did not know. Verse 17 says this, and he was 
afraid and said, how awesome is this? Do you know what's the difference between nowhere and awesome place? Do you know what's the difference between I wish I was never here and I'm smack dab where I always wanted to be? It's not your circumstances. It's not your location. It's not your situation. It's your awareness. One second. Only reason I'm here is because the sun set and I couldn't go any further. The next second. How awesome is this? Where's the singer? Y'all gave up all y'all microphones? What's up? Um, Holy Spirit, let us become more aware. Where's the singers at? Come on. You want it, Julia? I got you. Come on. <laughs> let us become more of your presence. Let us experience. We always mix those words up, don't we? Let us become more aware of your let us experience the fullness of your glory. God, let us become more aware of the fact that you never leave us. There's never a situation you're not in. There's never a moment that you're not on the scene. There's never a second in our life where you're just like, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. I got distracted. He's always there. Look at somebody next to you. Say, conduct yourself accordingly. <laughs> Write this down. You could play. I'm going to land this plane faster than you could imagine. <laughs> Second thought is this. God's presence is the gateway. Genesis chapter 28 verse 17 says this, and he was afraid and said, how awesome it. Some of you, you walked in this room frustrated with where you are and you're going to walk out calling it awesome just because you're going to catch a revelation that God's in the middle of it. Some of you walked in this room cursing your, your, your relationship status, your degree status, your employment status, your joy status, your peace status. You're going to walk out saying, this is an awesome place to be. Because I'm smack dab right in the middle of the presence of God, right, right where he wants me to be. It says he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. Watch this. And this is the gate of heaven. So step number one, Jacob became aware of God's presence. And as soon as he became aware of God's presence, he became aware that this point is a portal between the natural and the supernatural. I'm one of those weird people. I can eat at the same restaurant every single time and order the same meal every single time. And guess what I would be? Happy, 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 any normal people, any normal people like that. You just, change is overrated, adventures, come on, be, be proud, that's the favor of God's on your life. Where's the weirdos? You like new stuff, you like just, just to let you know, God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, so... You decide who's in the book, don't. Now, he is a guy that does new things too, but that's not the part we're going to read today. My wife is one of those that she will never want to go to the restaurant twice. I, I, there's so many places, especially in D.C. There's so many. I want to go somewhere new. And, and she, she said, ah, don't, don't worry about it. I've got the restaurant. And I'm like, oh, whatever. As long as I got food, I'm good. I remember we were going to this one restaurant. We're out of town. And we walk in. The only way I could describe it was a gypsy's thrift store. You got a picture in your mind? I mean, you walk in and it is a store full of knick-knack, patty wax, give a dog a bone, bunch of stuff nobody on planet Earth would want. Like a trombone with a picture frame around it. Bunch of seashell bracelets and and she's been raving about this restaurant like for weeks. And we walk into this thrift store and I'm like, what? 
It's thick. I don't see French fries. I don't see corn. I don't see anything. And she, she told y'all, I'm basic, y'all. Steak, mashed potatoes, corn. That's all I need. It's two starches. Shut up. Anyway. So I'm looking around like, where did I get stuck? And she walks confidently up to the counter of this thrift store. He said, we have a re reservation for 730. I'm like, where are we reserving? And to my shock, the person responds by saying, right this way. And I'm like, right which way? They take us behind the counter. I'm like, what, I got to work for my meal? What is going on? Next thing you know, they open a door in the corner of the room. And we walk through. And there's the most beautiful restaurant. I've ever seen in my life. There's music bumping that you can't hear in the thrift store. <laughs> There's people eating and vibing and enjoying it. All because there was one little door in the corner that separated confusion from an experience that would blow your... Just get that picture. There's so many believers that are hungry and stuck in the thrift store. Because they don't know that there's a door to a whole nother world that was designed to feed all of the needs that they could possibly have. Jacob said, surely the Lord is in this place. This place is awesome because his presence is here. And this is nothing short of a gateway to heaven. It breaks my heart how many people, how many believers live in the natural and don't know how to step into the supernatural. How many believers that every situation they look at, they can only see it based on what their strength is, what their ability is. And watch this, actually only expect God to come to where they are. Because I've got no idea how to bring this situation to where. Here's what Jacob said. This place, the presence of God, is the gateway to heaven. You see, in the natural, the rules are different than they are in the spiritual. In the natural, the rules are always if that person has power, they can actually stop my future. In the natural, the rules are this sickness could actually be the end of my story. In the natural, the rules are I can only have what I can produce. The spiritual, the rules are, if God be for me, it doesn't matter who is. The spiritual, the rules are that he speaks a better word than any sickness can speak over my life. In the spiritual, the world is, it's not by might nor by power, but it is by the spirit of God on my life. And Jacob caught something in this moment. Anywhere the presence of God is, it's a portal into the supernatural. Well, where is the presence of God? Wherever you are, aware. Do you know God could be in a room and one person can know and the other person oblivious? All based on who's aware. Think about the three Hebrew boys that were in the fire, tied up and bound, waiting to die. Their ropes fell off before the king even realized it. And by the time he realized there was a fourth man in the fire, the situation was already handled. I'm just wondering, God, could it be that I'm not aware that I actually don't have to stay in this natural situation? I can move into a place that I belong, seated in heavenly places. Play. Don't stop. We're going to land it. Last thing is this. Write this down. Heaven. Heaven has a plan for my life. I'm going to read it. I'm going to explain it. And we're going to decree it over your life. Somebody say, read it. Explain it. Decree it. Ready? Genesis 28, verse 1. 
Verse 13 says this. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, the God of Isaac, the land in which you lie, I will give to you. And your descendants also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Somebody say, it's not just about me. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have. Okay, how, how, how do we get to the place? Where God is prophesying over Jacob's life, telling him it's going to be better than you could have ever imagined. Well, let's track. Jacob's unaware of God. He takes matters into his own hand and lies and cheats. He ends up losing everything and having to run for his life. He ends up in the middle of nowhere, not because he wanted to be there, but because he ran out of sunlight. And in that place, in the middle of nowhere, after falling asleep on a rock, God reveals himself to him. And Jacob goes from oblivious to aware. Surely the presence of the Lord is here. He goes from awareness of God's presence to awareness of heaven in his life. And he goes from awareness of heaven in his life to awareness of heaven's got a plan for me. And all of a sudden, God's speaking to Jacob saying, I got plans for you. By the way, just in case you don't know who I am, I'm the same God of your father, Abraham. And I, God begins to remind Jacob of all that he's already done. Then he tells Jacob, this is bigger than just you. I planned on doing this through you before you were even born. So what's on your life isn't a hope and a prayer. It's a covenant. And because I said I'm going to do it, guess what? It will come to pass. By the way, wherever you go, I'll be there. And I'm going to bring you back to every promise that I've ever made. And I will not quit until it's done. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. Can I give you what blew my mind? I say this almost every time I preach. If I were God and I had told somebody that they were going to see great things in their life and from the moment I told them all they did was mess their life up and by the time I came to them they had forfeited everything that I had for them I wouldn't start by reminding them how good it was going to get. I wouldn't start by telling them what I have for them. I would start by telling them how badly they've messed up. And I'm here because I got to rescue you. Because you messed this up. And the way God talked to Jacob, you would have think that Jacob was looking for God. You would have thought that Jacob had lived in faith up to that moment. You would have thought that, that Jacob had led a life of integrity and a life of virtue and, and a life of faith. This was Jacob that had cheated and connived his way the entire way. And it's as if God didn't even see that because all God could see was the promise and the plan and the future that he had. One of the reasons why we avoid the presence of God is because we're more aware of our track record than he is. And we play this works game of, God, I can't expect a great future based on the mistakes of my past. God, I can't expect that. Yeah, you made that promise, but that was the perfect me, not to the. Church, as we close, I just got one thing to remind you. That God knows the plans that he has for you. And they're plans to prosper you and not to. Plans to give you hope and a future. And what God wants in this moment is for you to wake up 
to the fact that he is with you. He is for you. He is working this situation out for your good. He hasn't left you. He hasn't abandoned you. You haven't messed it up too badly that it is irrevocable. You haven't gotten it to the place that it can't be redeemed and can't be restored. Matter of fact, he said, when I told you what your future was going to look like, I added to the equation this last few years that it didn't go quite the way that you thought it was going to go. Your future is still secure. My plan is still intact. My presence is still here with you. I'm just asking, will you wake up and be aware that you're in an awesome place because I'm here. God, help me get to the place where I judge the seasons of my life. Not based on if things are going my way, but based on if he's with me. Because if he's with me, he's for me. If he's for me, it's going to work out better than I could ever ask, think, or imagine. Right where you are, can you hop up on your feet? Just we are, if you could close your eyes. Sometimes I like to just open my hands just as a, a posture of receiving from God. And just for about two minutes, can you... Can you just have a conversation with God? Think about that area of your life that it just doesn't look the way you thought it was going to look. Think about that area that you're overwhelmed with, that you're frustrated with. And as if, as if that area is right there in your hand, just speak over it and say, surely the God's in this. And I didn't even realize it. Come on, speak about, say, surely God's in this. Just take a second, ask God, God, make me more aware. Of your presence. God, make me aware of the fact that you're standing right there in the middle of that fire with me. Yeah, my boat's in a storm, but God, you're in the boat. Yeah, the situation may be overwhelming, but God, you're, God, you're here and because because you're here, this place is awesome. And church, pray this, pray, pray God, restore a reverence for you. Some Bible verses call it the fear of the Lord. God, as I become aware of you, help me to stop taking you for granted. Help me to begin to watch my words as if you're in the room. Help me to begin to watch my tone as if you're in the room. Watch my actions, watch my frustrations, watch my thoughts. It's God, restore a fear for you, a, a, a reverence for you. Jacob said this place of awareness of God's presence is a gateway to heaven. Come on, say this over your situation. Say natural rules no longer apply to me. 
because I've been seated in the supernatural. I've been, I've been seated in heavenly places. Come on, look over that situation, that, that thing that you're disappointed in, that you're discouraged in, that you're overwhelmed. Just begin to speak over it. The rules of this earth don't apply anymore. I'm in the atmosphere of miracles. I'm with a God that calls things that are not as though they are. I have a God that looks at dead situations and calls them alive. Hey. The last step, Zephaniah says that God sings songs of deliverance over us. Just, just take a moment and let God speak over that situation. Just like he spoke over Jacob and said, I'm going to give you this land. I'm, I'm going to multiply your descendants. I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you. Just imagine God speaking over your situation right now, saying that I have plans for it. It's going to work out better than you could ever ask, think, or imagine. I, I've got provision. I've got healing. I've got breakthrough. I am the God that will raise up against your enemies. And if I be for you, it doesn't matter that who's against you. I'm the God that opens doors. I'm the God that shuts doors on the enemy. I'm the God that keeps you in perfect peace. I'm the God that will guard your heart and will guard your mind and keep you in Christ Jesus. I'm the God that allows joy to be your strength and depression not to be your story. I'm the God that breaks chains off, that, that looses addiction. Just allow God to speak over that situation right now. Songs of deliverance. 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 Last thing, get in your mind this picture. Begin to imagine that situation after the miracle has taken place. Come on, get this picture in your mind of what's it going to look like after he's done what he said he's going to do. Picture yourself walking in healing. Picture yourself walking into that home. Picture yourself having that relationship in a place of healing and joy. And Come on, get your mad. Songs of deliverance. Come on, you can have it if you can see it, but if you can't see it, you can't have it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you imagine?
everything that God promised us worked out easy. Am I the only one? I wish the promises of God were a straight line from point A to point B. But for some reason, he likes to... (laughs) But it doesn't matter how squiggly the path is. If he said it, it will come to pass. And sometimes the path is more difficult because the miracle is bigger And you're thinking you just want that situation to work out because you're over it. You don't realize that God says that you've got children's salvation that are connected to that story. You've got other people that are going to see that and their lives are going to... God says, I'm working something out so much bigger than you can ever ask, think, or imagine. Somebody shout, this is the atmosphere of miracles. Before I let you go, I want to pray for some things because God's in this room right now. If there's sickness in your body in any way, can you just lift your hand where you are, whether it's an eye condition, whether it's a nerve condition, whether it's something that they say is terminal or whatever, maybe just where you are, both locations, just lift your hand, lift your hand, lift your hand. If you see somebody with their hand lifted, just stretch your hand towards it. Begin to pray over them right now in the name of Jesus. This, This is the atmosphere of faith. This is a room and a church full of people that know that you are able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ever ask, think, or imagine. So in the name of Jesus, God, we begin to pray for supernatural healing. I sense there's somebody in this room that you've been having migraines almost connected to a concussion or something like that if that's you wave at me wave at me right here come on lift your hands Father God we thank you even right now God that you're healing at any blockage, God, and sinuses, whatever cause of that migraine there, God, whatever that situation was, God, you're the A of God that speaks a new word. So, God, we thank you right now that there's healing. God, we thank you right now that there's peaceful sleep. God, we thank you right now that you're alleviating the pain. And, God, that it will not return in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Come on, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. If you have a a family member that's sick, maybe it's not you, but there's somebody in your family that you're contending for. If that's you, just lift your hands right now. Come on, church, go to work. If you see a hand up, shut your hand up. Begin to pray. Let the way make it through. Father God, you said that you have been given a name that is above name. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. God, cancer is a name, which means it must bow to the name of Jesus. Dementia is a name, which means it must bow to the name of Jesus. Nerve damage is a name, thus it must bow to the name of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare every sickness, every infirmity. God, every Every part of our human body that is not in kingdom order. God, we speak healing in the name of Jesus. We speak restoration in the name of Jesus. God, we decree and declare, God, that tumors are shrinking in the name of Jesus. We declare and declare, God, that eyesight is being restored, dear God. We decree and declare, God, that people are being brought back, God, into a place of cognitiveness, God. We thank you. Can you imagine? The Bible 
Bible says that who the Son sets free is free indeed. And the spirit of freedom is in this room right now. If you walked in tonight just heavy, just feeling I can't get my joy back, I can't get my energy back, I just feel myself exhausted and fatigued and overwhelmed, maybe it's something major like an addiction or a bondage or whatever it may be, maybe it's something minor like I just can't get my mojo back, I just can't get my, whatever it is, the bondage breaking spirit of God is in this room right now. If that's you, do me a favor, just lift your hands, just lift your hands, Father God, we do decree and declare that whom the sun sets free, God is free indeed. God, you said in this moment that you're going to take off this spirit of heaviness, that you're going to restore it with a spirit of praise, dear God. We thank you in the name of Jesus, God, that you're restoring, God, that you're freeing, God, that you're rejuvenating. God, you said they that wait on the Lord, their strength shall be renewed, dear God. God, we thank you right now that you're breaking addictions, dear God. You're breaking bondages, dear God. You're breaking sorrow and despair and anxiety and worry and depression. God, freedom be released in this moment. Freedom be released in this moment. Freedom be released. And it's gonna but the way for the people that need breakthrough in some situation of your life. What's breakthrough mean? It means for some reason this area of my life seems like it's hit an impasse. I'm not seeing any progress. I should be further than I am right now, but it just seems stuck. And if you've been around me long enough, you know God speaks to me in just pictures. I just have this image in my mind. You ever seen when police breach a door, they got that big old metal rod and they're like banging on the door trying to get, I just get this picture that you're standing in front of this situation and you've just been banging on the door trying to get through. And here comes Jesus saying, step aside. I don't need you to kick the door down. I don't need you to push the door down. I don't need you to show. It's not by might. It's not by power. But the Lord of the breakthrough is here. And when he says a door is open, that door is open. So if you say, hey, I have an area of my life that I need breakthrough in. I've been punching it. I've been kicking it. I've been pushing it. But I need Jesus to put his weight behind it. If that's you, just begin to lift your hands. Father God, we decree and declare you said that you are the Lord of the breakthrough. You are the God that opens doors that no man can shut. So God, we decree and declare God, breakthrough over that situation. God, breakthrough over that situation. Breakthrough over that situation. Breakthrough over no longer does the enemy have the authority to block, to hinder, to hold up. But God, you're releasing right now all promises of God are yes and amen in that situation. God, we bless you. God, we honor you. God, we... can you take about 60 seconds and praise God that breakthrough has come to your journey? Right!
Church, hear me. By the fact that you're a Christian means that you're a child of God. And the fact that you're a child of God means that the natural rules do not apply to your situation. How awesome is this place? Is this season of life in life right now? Because the presence of the Lord is here and I did not know it. You're getting ready to walk into the biggest miracle that you ever thought possible. Come on, somebody give God some praise. Yeah. I'm going to remind you. I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to send you home. You ready for the reminder? Your last thought tonight before you go to bed is what? There's a ladder over my pillow that reaches to heaven and there's angels ascending and descending and God is overlooking the whole operation to make sure that every single promise he's made over my life will come to pass. If you believe it, somebody shout amen in this place. Father God, we bless you. We thank you. You are a miracle working God. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We make a decision that we will not retract our faith, but we believe that you will see through to completion this good work that you've begun in us. Take us home safely, we pray. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you.